I'm 31. I'm the fattest I've ever been, and I still think I'm gonna make it. You know what? Um, welcome to St. Albans Central. Daddy's got something he wants to get off his chest. Um, we were uh, last last week's episode. Um, we were talking about Russ and how inspiring he was. Um, he's super inspiring to me. He's got like three point nine million. I don't know how many monthly listeners. Like 15, 20 million monthly listeners. He's doing sold out um, shows around the world. He played the pyramids. Which like who uh, who knew you could play the pyramids? He is like such an inspiration to independent people, and here I am, Saint Aubin, sitting in my garage right now, recording a podcast on lights that barely work, a camera I don't understand, and a producer I don't pay jack shit. <laughs> okay, here I am, looking at Russ and being like, "Yeah, why couldn't I do that?" You know, and I think th- there, there's a thing with musicians that um. You have to be completely delusional to think you'll have a music career. Mm. Like a hundred percent. And I think I'm like self-aware enough to know that I'm completely delusional to think that I'm going to have a career. It's going to happen, you know, and not only a career, I'm going to have a lucrative career where I'll have like employees. I'll have like a videographer. I'll have a songwriter. I'll have a marketer. I'll have a social media person. I'll have a man. I'll have all these people. I think I'll be in like the low millions in mm. like revenue and have a bunch of employees. You know, that's how delusional I am. I'm 31. I'm the fattest I've ever been. And I still think I'm going to make it. Dream big, baby. Dream big. Dream well, I should big. dream a little smaller. <laughs> huh? <laughs> but like you you have to be a little del- cuz like the music game it's not for realistic people. Because- you either have to be delusional or you have to have mommy or daddy's checkbook. Sure, know, absolutely. You know, but like you have to have this unrealistic belief in self. Yeah. Um because the the reality is is like I'm not special. If you're a musician, you're not special. I'm sorry. You're probably a four on the Enneagram and uh, looking at the world, there's probably a billion other fours in the world. So you're not that special and it's okay. I think there's actually a lot of freedom in the idea that like, oh, I'm not that special. So who gives a fuck? Mm. Do whatever I want, you know? Um, But that, I think that's the harsh reality of like, I understand that I'm not that special. I think my songs are great, but they're not, they're not, you know, they're not seven nation army, you know, but also I think they are, you know, it's like this, it's this dualistic reality of I'm not special, but I'm also delusional enough to think that I'm going to make it big Mm -hmm. one day. Um, maybe I have split personalities. I don't know, but I don't know. I just think like when people, they kind of get down. I'm like, oh man, oh if I, I wish oh, I'd never be able to do that. It's like, why? Yeah. Like, do you think Russ, when he started out, he's like, hey, I'm gonna play the pyramids. Probably. Like, dream big. Like, you have to dream. Like, what? It's like I remember in in at Lake Street Elementary where I went to elementary school in Crown Point, Indiana. There was a banner above my locker, and it said this: "Shoot for the moon, even if you miss, you'll land among the stars." Wow. And that's who I am, dude. I'm a delusional <laughs> ape who's <laughs> shooting for the moon and probably just going to crash and burn into like a dying, decaying star, and I'll be up there by myself with my dog well, and my wife. Yeah, at least you got moose. So. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, dude, you have to, like, I like, it's not, being a musician, it's not for the faint of heart. It's not for... The people who are like, I need to have a calculated approach and I need security and all that stuff. It's just like, 
Mm. I don't know, dude. Like the 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 likelihood of me having a career is like astronomically small. Like because we always look at all of these musicians who are like making it. Like, oh man, that'd be great. There's forty of them. Yeah. There's forty of them in the entire world, and there's there's probably tens of millions of musicians who want to make it, and there's 40, 40 bands that you've heard of. Yeah. You know. I'm, no, like, yeah, no, I, I completely agree. I look at like the just the landscape of people trying to be musicians, especially in today's world, how easy it is to pick up like synths and just like you know, you can mix at home yep. now. You don't even need like a hard, like, you know, big like unit to set up. You can just have a laptop in your bedroom mm-hmm. and you can make songs. So it's like everyone wants to be in that creative space and make stuff, which is great. But you know, we were talking a while ago about this, just about how you had to keep pushing, you know, mm-hmm. almost, don't worry about the perfect, you know, thing to come out. You just have to push through, yep. just get stuff out there, you know, get it off your plate. Did you what, like, did you ever think you were going to make it? Um, cause I feel like you, like you're a musician, yeah. but we, our brains are a little different. I, you're not as, you, you're not as delusional. I think when I first started in college, I thought, boy, maybe we'll get picked up. And I think the, farthest I ever thought I would go is like maybe it would get picked up by like a big band and go on some like US kind yeah, of yeah. tour thing like that was probably as big as I could really dream at the time mm-hmm. I never felt like I was ever in the space deep enough to go yep like I could do this as a full-time career mm-hmm. so I don't know, I always had that in my vision yeah. but um I just but you know even nowadays, it's like to start from scratch. Like that's the hardest part. Is yeah. like with bands. It's like just oh, dude. Starting. I mean, it's like thankfully St. Alban has like a name, and it's it is yeah. it's more of a rebrand than a mm-hmm. fresh start. But in a lot of ways, it is. It's like I'm like I feel like I'm old. I don't move as well. You know, I don't know who all like the young kids are dude, in the scene. Just three years, I have gone from like I'm in the scene to yeah, like yeah. I'm on the outside. Like, I'm like I'm at a show in my Crocs, you know, and people are like looking down, they're like trendy. I'm like these are trendy. Like I just have a bunion, you know. Like <laughs> it's um, yeah. I, I yeah. I don't. I don't know. And I think too. One of the hard things about being you you have to be okay with things not working out or thing mm. you have to be malleable. One of my good friends, um, he talks about. I mean, he wanted to be someone like me. He wanted to be a front man of a band and write songs, and that's that was his calling all throughout his twenties. He's forty now, and now he's just like, ugh, it sounds exhausting and terrible to go out on the road. And to be like a front man and like pump up the crowd. But hmm. now he's just like, now I actually think my real calling was being a producer and a songwriter. Hmm. But like it took years of him struggling, getting depressed, think he wasn't going to make it or whatever. But now he's just like, I love being in the producer chair. Like that's where he's at. And I feel like a lot of people, they're probably like me, who are just want to be a front man, front woman, whatever but they're hanging on to it so tight that they can't like let it go. Yeah. And you just, you have to kind of just like roll with the punches. Cause like for, for me, it's like music is my primary conduit in which I create, but I just want to create shit and create shit with my friends. I just happen to be good at music. Mm. You know, I'm not great with like editing or, or videography or, or, or any like painting. The only art form I've been really good as is, is like, is writing songs and like creating and telling stories, mm. you know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, dude, I mean, and too, man, nobody like, there's so many musicians. They're like, you can just smell the desperation on them. And they're just like, yeah. I have to, and they take it too seriously. I, oh honestly, gosh, if, if yes. St. Alban had a superpower, it's, I take my craft and the business seriously. I give two shits about what people think of me. And like, I don't take myself seriously. I am almost a 400-pound man, and I take my shirt off, dude. My booty crack hangs out all the time, but damn, my songs are good, you know? But damn, my songs are good. I'm not almost good. 400 pounds. <laughs> I, I would look amazing if I was almost 400 pounds. I'm like, wow. I'm like, I'm not quite, I'm, I'm, not, I'm definitely overweight, but I'm not the over, I'm not like super fat to where like your friend lost 50 pounds and you can't tell. Mm. Like that type of obesity, you know? 
But yeah, dude, like I, you know, I mean, I, we all have a musician friend who's like, they're just like, you can feel it. It's just like, oh, you want this too much. Yep. Because like, and like, there's a, I, I, I don't know necessarily know if I know how to like qualify it, but like, you want to have a drive and an ambition, but you don't want to be like whiny about it. Or let people feel like, oh, he needs this, you know? Yeah. Like like your buddy from who peaked in high school, you meet him at a bar, and he's still wearing this Leatherman's jacket. And you're just like, oh, he still needs to talk about the glory days. Like, yeah. oh, he needs this right now. But I think I, it's people who, like, they jump on a trend just because it is the trend, not mm-hmm. because it's, like, true to their craft or their music. That's what kind of bothers me a little bit. I mean... I guess everyone kind of hits a bandwagoner, but yeah. I've seen that in musicians where like, let's just completely reinvent our sound because now like in this summer it's eight it's all about eighty synth. Or like, yeah, you know, the, like the or band like, Perry. Yeah, or like they or, were like this country band that making this pop thing. It's yep. like boo. It's just like I don't care if obviously bands change a little bit over time, but it's like I've I've met those musicians. I've had friends like that where it's like you can tell they are just swing over the fences. Mm-hmm. Every time, yeah. just trying to have something but stick. Yeah, and there's just something they just like, you know, you're in a room with them and they're just like, I just, I need this. And yeah. I'm just like, oh, Bubba, <laughs> this is not a good look. It's like your friend who's just like, I need a girlfriend, dude. I'm like, oh, dude, no, you need to take a cold shower. That's what you need. <laughs> but yeah, man, I mean, I don't know. I, I mean, I, I think about it and I still like, and it's not to say that like, I mean, my wife is probably, I have like a small group of friends who will probably see like the vulnerable side of me. Like, like, for example, I released a song tomorrow and it came out. The song's called Tomorrow. It's a terrible title (laughs) when you put it in a sentence, but it's a great song. (laughs) But no one's going to fucking listen to it, dude. And, but I will probably weep to my wife. You know, I'll just like, man. I'm really sick of nobody caring mm. about what I do. Um, but the reality is, is like, why should they care? You know, I feel like musicians, they have this sense of entitlement of like, you should care about my art. But in reality, it's like, no, they shouldn't care. You should make them care. dude. Yeah. You can't, y- nobody's entitled to get anything. Dude. The one thing we're all entitled to is death, dude. We're all going to fucking die one day. Like that's the one hundred percent guarantee that. in life. <laughs> Everything else, it's just like I don't deserve, or like who knows if it's gonna happen, you know. Mm. But we just there's this entitlement that comes to musicians. Anytime the song comes out, we're just like, and, or our friends don't care, we get upset. Like why don't they care? And it's just like because they have a life, dude. Like their life isn't your art. And I understand you feel your art so in- in- intensely. So, like, go back to work. Like, make them care. Keep working on shit. Write songs that are so good that people would be like, oh. Like, you know when I have a good song? If I send it to somebody or, like, I play it for somebody, it's like, hey, can you play that again? Mm. Oh, you got a good song. Or if somebody unprompted text you about your song or something like i don't know like if you send a song to somebody you're gonna have you know 80 percent people oh man this is great they don't give two shits dude Mm -hmm. they they listen the first couple lines they gave you your 30 seconds so you could get a stream but after that dude like they don't they don't care yep um and i just think musicians we got to stop blaming other people for not caring and it's just like maybe just maybe the reason people don't care is because your song isn't good enough and that's okay. Mm. That's okay. Like, not every song's gonna be a banger, dude. Not every song's gonna be a teenage dirtback. You know, name one other of their songs. I literally could not. Thank you. Like, <laughs> you know. So it's like, it's okay, but just like, don't take it as like an offense. It's just like, I like, I feel like at this point, I've almost used it. It's like, it's like drive for me. It's like, oh, mm. this one didn't get you. Okay, okay, okay. Maybe the next one, you know, but maybe in like 15, like after 15 songs and they still don't get, I'm like, yeah, I'm, this is not, I should go be a Would you be okay with being a, a one hit wonder? Absolutely. Just, that's it. Do you know how hard it is to write a song? A good song, you know, and especially a one hit wonder. Like we just is getting paid. 
Oh yeah. They're still every year. They 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 don't have to do any because like I don't like I, in a perfect world like if I would I would have a one hit wonder that I get a consistent paycheck every single year a good paycheck and then I can just like fade off into ether and what have my level small... of one hit wonder would you want like are you talking like you know there's like some of the annual ones that come back around all the time oh like... I mean. It, perfect world i'd have a hit christmas song because it comes around every year <laughs> i know you mariah like carey <laughs> every single year she probably gets like 10 million dollars <sighs> every single year because like mm. we all know the day after thanksgiving all i want for christmas i'm trying to think it's of like wild. the biggest one hit wonder i mean teenage dirtbag i don't think it was that big i mean it was a huge song. Yeah. It's recently but, got a lot more popular, though. That's for sure. Uh, be, well, because of TikTok yeah. and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But um, I, yeah, I would absolutely take a one-hit wonder, dude. Like, yeah, like, I would do it. I think beat. for me, like a perfect career is like by my tenth song, one, my my tenth song pops a little bit, and then people have a catalog mm. of 10, 20 songs that are out. And they can listen to it. And then they're like, oh, he's got a YouTube channel. Oh, he has a podcast. Oh, he does all this other stuff as well. So they have a bunch of avenues to find me. And then I actually create like a fan. And then I do a tour, a headlining tour. And it's like, you know, 200 person venues or something like that. Mm -hmm. and, for the, and then you just slowly build. Um, but absolutely, I take, I take a, hit, uh, a one hit wonder. Oh, yeah. Nope, no doubt in my mind I would do that. I would love to play the same to, stuff for the rest of my life, not to I learn used, anything new. I used to be like, no, I wouldn't want to do that. But I'm just like, like after like understanding the, the industry and how hard it is to write a good song, it's just like, absolutely. Yeah, I used to feel a little sad about One Hit Wonder Band. Like I would go somewhere and see somebody and be like, oh, this is like, they're going to have to play their song because they mm -hmm. feel like they have to. And yeah. now I'm looking at it, I'm like, I think I would love that, that people Absolutely. still want to see me after like 20 or, you know, 25 years, yeah. even if it's the same song I've played 500,000 times. Yeah. Like, I don't care if people get a pop for it, mm -hmm. like they're going to go for it. Yeah. But I mean, if this is the nice thing about being a musician, like if you don't make it with your original music, you can always just start a cover band, you know? Hey. And I used to like, I look back and I used to like, oh, uh, cover bands. It's like, oh, it's the pussies you know they didn't work hard enough but now i get it dude because like sometimes you just need to like like you just gotta scratch the itch dude it i was about to you talk know? about this earlier because i d was just started playing with one and it's like it scratches the itch of where i can play music at the level i want because mm -hmm. they're they're finished songs that yep. are really good songs mm -hmm. and you can just play your instrument and love it and mm -hmm. you don't have to care about like and other people this. are into it too dude oh my god and people go bananas do you think oh do my you god think starting or joining a cover band is like throwing the towel in a little bit yeah i won't lie it feels like well i'm kind of giving up on creating something but gosh darn it playing like blink yeah. for just people are like yep. going bananas for it was amazing yeah. like unbelievable yeah i think it, it probably is a little bit but it's like it's like okay i'm not gonna like really haul ass to try to make it but i'm still gonna have fun i and never like, got that crowd participation at any of the shows i've like been a part of like, yeah oh yeah dude i remember everybody to sing is wild. i've played one show where people sang the chorus yeah and there was six of them <laughs> out of like, but that still feels good out of like 58 it means you know. the world just seeing someone even mouth any lyrics. Oh, though, you unreal! Know? Even right, like I've like my buddy Tim Gross. Mm -hmm. He he sings my songs and it makes me feel amazing. Dude. That guy, that he big is. old fucking Q-tip dude. He's so tall and <laughs> lanky. Um, actually, he's actually one of the dudes. I think we, I played a show. I don't know if you might have played it. Um, he was drunk and he talked so yeah, loud. I remember this. Where I had to be like, hey, Tim. Shut up! You're so loud, and he's like, "Oops!" I think I kind of upset him, but <laughs> but yeah, dude. I think cover yeah cover bands are sellouts. It's fine. Yeah, you know? I'm not gonna like, okay. like call it for not what it is. It's like, what are you gonna do? Just like, no, it's it's original music or bust, no. and you're gonna go like be a beer salesman, you know? I and can just hate your life. Yeah, I'd much rather play for a room of fifty people 
that are engaged that are for covers versus like starting a new band yep. and you have to do those six people shows. Yeah, like you don't want to be 55 and start a new no. band and be like, hey, this song's going to be it, you yeah. know? Yeah. Um, it's like you either start a cover band or you really give up and you go play at a church. <sighs> That's where people really throw in the towel. <sighs> That's where people throw in the towel who weren't good enough to be anything. Because it's just like, I only know how to play with a capo. Why don't you join our worship band? Why don't you play for our youth group, you know? <laughs> oh, that brought a lot of flashbacks to me right there. Oh, wow. man. No, it's... and I, Yeah, I am... Um, yeah, cover bands are... But well, here's the other thing about cover bands. You get paid... Dude, if you're a good cover band, yep. you can get paid well. Especially if you're like a wedding. Like I went oh, to a wedding, yeah. cover band played. They probably got paid I don't know. Ten grand. Probably. Each of them walked away with, you know, fifteen hundred bucks yeah. or whatever. They like, had a fun night. They like that and that's where like all the musicians like me who are like original OGs, it's all about like you gotta be original. Those cover bands are going to be looking down at me. You know, like here, here's twenty bucks. <laughs> yeah. You know, go buy yourself a pack of strings because I know you can't afford it. <laughs> That's what. So I mean, it's it, it's a give or take. You it know, is. you play one cover show and you've made. That's the crazy thing. You play one, you sell out. You play one cover band show and you make more money than your entire original music career. Oh, corporate like America will shell out dollars. Oh, they just for, for you to bands. play like where the streets have no names. Oh dude, my just gosh. you two or like Colt play the scientist or shut up and dance with me. Not like, even long sets. I remember seeing a cover band at this. It was for some reason I was roped into this. It was like an engineering conference in Cincinnati and they had a three, three person cover band, maybe like three hours. I talked to the guys, they got paid five grand. For three hours. Three guys, That's crazy. piano, drums, and another piano. That was it. It was That's like... That's crazy, dude. Five grand. I would do that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's like... I, like, I probably should start some sort of cover band. Like, doing a cover band, that's how you can, like... Because I'm trying to think, I'm like, of creative ways to fund... Because in a perfect world, St. Alban would have, like, a $12,000 operating budget to, like, pay for marketing and stuff like that. But I'm like, oh, I could probably just play, like three cover band shows and like make it but i'm like no what kind of covers would you do if you could pick one? i I, would, I mean it would probably be like hinder or something like that because those bros would shell Hell out the money yeah like i would only do hinder and stained and then if they really wanted to shell out the cash i'm like all right here's a daughtry song you know <laughs> oh i love it can you imagine some corporate of it and they're kicking it off with stain yeah, yeah. <laughs> Or um, oh, man. yeah, I would actually. Uh, you know what a fun co- I would, like a Hall and Oates cover band? Oh, just like call them o- Oates and Hall or something like that. I or Hall and Oates. They're... It's right in Come itself. On, Come on. Um, that's good. But maybe one day, dude. I don't know. We'll see. Um, have you? Did you watch She Hulk at all? Have you been, I'm, were you a Marvel bro at nope, all? Not no? at all. Okay. I've stayed far away from that whole fire. I watched She-Hulk. And I actually, I was one of the few people who actually liked it. And then the ending happened. And it was dog shit, dude. Imagine, imagine four writers were all walking in separate hallways and looking down at their script. And then they all ran into each other and mixed up their scripts. And then the She-Hulk writer just grabbed some papers and handed it in. Which is like, here's the ending. Oh, my gosh. It was so bad, dude. I I think Marvel's done. I hope so. I'm so tired of it. I think they're done. Uh, This is my opinion. I think from Iron Man all the way to Avengers Endgame, it's one of the greatest cinematic feats. Um definitely definitely dark spots on it i mean you had a uh, um you know thor dark world wasn't great iron man 3 wasn't great i mean you you, you know shoot or shoot you know you can't make everyone but the story was fantastic from iron man 
all the way to end game and they planned it out and how, like how all these characters like slowly came together and formed this group and then they slowly became like created this beautiful world yeah and it's to me one of the greatest cinematic feats of all time the problem is end game happened and now you're starting at this like massive crescendo mm -hmm. so it's like you can't just do it again you know like you you can't just oh now like everything's an avengers level threat yeah it's just like at some point it's just like what else do you got you know because like all the film like multiverse of madness wasn't great um thor god of thunder was funny but it was more of a it, but they should have they should have killed the Jane Foster story and made Gore the God Butcher way more involved because Christian Bale was fucking awesome. Oh, <laughs> nice! I get just it. Kidding. Whatever. Uh, this is Scooter's last show. Um, I just don't know anything about Marvel. No, I know, I'm but so it's just the like outside. the only one that was like really good. Like WandaVision was dope. It was like really I did really cool. Watch an episode or two of that. It was like how they told the stories was really cool, and then Shang Chi was great. It's everything else, it's just like I just don't think I don't think they can salvage it because they're starting. Like we already know the story, like the the story arc. Mm. It's going to be this huge Avengers level threat, and it's like nobody cares about Iron Heart. You know, uh, we want we want Iron Man and Captain America back. We don't care about She Hulk, dude. Not because she's a woman, Whoa. but because they can't write a fucking script, dude. Yeah. That's why. Yep. So I, I'm a little, I'm a little, I mean, I'm still going to like watch it because I still have hope. I'm an optimist. I have hope in humanity, even though it dwindles every single day. But mm. I don't know. I just, I don't see how they can, they can like, they can just make this like, you can't just. It can't go on forever. Yeah. That's my thing. It's like this started when I was in high school. Yep. I mean, it's still I, what going. They, honestly, what they probably should have done is just done, ended with Avengers Endgame yeah. and then did the Spider-Man, like then Spider-Man Homecoming and then maybe a couple Spider-Man films and then just ended it and then rebooted it in like 10 years. There's just too much money to be had, though. What? Well, yeah, That's I know, but people, but it's like they're not making nearly as much money as they used to, mm -mm. you know, because people like people uh, far from home. People, I mean, so many people saw that, but I think I was looking at the numbers on um, what's it, uh, Thor: Love and Thunder, and like people didn't go back to go see it, just because it's just like I don't know. I think they're shit in the bed, dude. But I just I don't think it's their fault. I just think like mm. you can't. Everything can't be an Avengers level threat. And also, here's a here's a here's like a plot hole in all these stories. It's like if you're having a real problem, why can't you just call the other Avengers? It's like once they're introduced, yeah. why can't you be like, hey Thor, can you help me out? You, you got you got like a teleportation. You'll get here in like three seconds. Yeah. We'll like kick the shit out of this ugly nerd, and then like we're back. You know. There's always personal drama. There's always something that's tying people yeah. up, you know? Whatever. Dude. I'm just like, oh, really? Oh, he had a, Thor has a toothache. I'm like, get the fuck out of here, dude. <laughs> Me only the shit out of that thing, you know? Um, I think that's it. I feel good. You feel good? Or let yeah. keep talking. No. I'll go all day. What no, are you we're talking good. about, dude? We're, we're just shy of 30. <sighs> well, thanks for listening, everybody. I hope you have a great day. Um, uh, my song tomorrow is still out, um, and we just passed a hundred thousand streams. <laughs> we're watching it live yeah, right now. It live. I'm kidding. <laughs> nobody cares. Still, nobody cares. Um, but go hug your dad. Um, you know, hug your mom because you still got one. Yep. In the arms of an angel. <laughs> Thanks for listening, everybody. Have a wonderful evening. <laughs>